After a successful international escapade, waking up on some island across the continent before crashing back to reality with a sobering night against the noisy neighbours, we return to club duty with a massive six-pointer between Motherwell and St Mirren, with both sides making an early bid for a top six berth ahead of the chasing pack. And the total price of today's game was just under £23. As I have explained before, I'm adding in the average price of a match ticket with the season ticket I have got, as well as the train return fee. The state of this pie, by the way, is as if the pastry on top is like a wee hat. I've never seen that before. But here we are today at Far Park for a second versus third as the day started clash. Of course, Rangers have beaten St Johnson, so Rangers moved to third in the league. But today it's a massive six pointer for a place at the top of the table. Of course, Celtic are playing Dundee today, so if the results go our way, we could be top of the league if we beat St Mirren today, but it's a massive task because of course, we've already played them once this season and we've played into their hands and we've tried to play a physical game up top and it didn't work at all. We really have to play ball and deck today uh, because if we're trying to play it in the air, there's no way we're going to beat them. My prediction today, I think it's going to be a one each draw. I think it's too tight to call between these two sides. Well, I'd love to think with our home advantage, you know, our 100% record here this season, is going to hopefully go untarnished today, but <laughs> you know, more of averages suggests, in my opinion, that we may not win today, but I would happily take a point to just keep our run going because although we need to win today because our next two games are against Rangers and Celtic, so it's a lot of a lot to ask today, but we have to we have to win if we want any chance of. Did I say a title race? <laughs> Here we go, match day five, Motherwell versus St Mirren. Come on the well. And we're off. That'll do. Keep him there. Oh, it was done far too easy there. Well done. No, I feel. exactly as I expected, like both teams have cancelled each other out I mean, there's not really many opportunities that have been like oh you should score there but there have been half chances, both sides have had half chances uh, the one in the first half, Mandron cutting it back to, I think it was Kilty who sclaffed the shot uh, back in the direction of Liam Kelly uh, Theo Beard got through and just put the ball past the post and I think those are the two main chances that have happened. I think Nil Nil's a fair reflection on how the game's gone. It's two hard working teams just trying to battle and get the three points and they've cancelled each other out. So yeah, bring on the second half on the well. 
and the teams are back out for the second half. CS Open, there's at least a couple of goals down this end. Oh, gone. Oh! Swapping the vent here. What a save! Defensively, we've been poor this first 13 minutes and a half. It's cost us. Uh, we really need to start making a change here. Otherwise, the game's going to run away from us. I don't know what's going to happen here. Oh, good save. That's just too bloody predictable. <laughs> Get out of strain. 20 minutes to go. I feel bears running on. Another free kick. Oh, for goodness sake, Blaney. Those lads. Come on. Nothing, absolutely nothing ball. Oh, ah, oh, William. Oh, 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 did we ship it? Oh. Save, but <laughs> another missed opportunity. Oh, shot! Who's running in, man? Nothing fancy, just put it in the box. Oh, that's shite. That is awful. Come on, Georgie. Oh, 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 lucky. Good cross there. Let's try up here. Oh, 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 on, man on. oh, 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 Well done. Oh. oh, here we go. Time we've lost 1 0. I mean, our good run was going to come to an end at some point, but it really shouldn't have come to this game. Now, honestly, it feels like St. Martin have a number on us this season. That's twice it's happened in the last, what, four weeks.
and we've lost 1-0 on both occasions. The first time, we deserved to lose. This time round, however, I feel like we were robbed, uh, not going to lie. The first half, I thought, was a fair result, a draw at half time because I don't think either side really created much, although both sides had an opportunity at either end, and neither side could really take advantage of the few opportunities and they, they were all really half chances. However, 10 minutes into the second half, St Mirren take the lead and I thought that was a good wake-up call for us because we weren't out, out dominating the game and it's been a similar sort of feel to the Hibs and the Kilmarnock at home games so far this season where we've had the ball in the opposition half quite a lot but we've not really done anything with it. Then we concede after switching off from the cross and I mean it's a deep cross and there's no one picking up at the back stick and I think it's Stephen O'Donnell's man but I, I'm not too sure. The ball goes into the net and it's pandemonium in the way end and we haven't marked up and we don't look too clever. It was at this point St Mirren sat back and soaked up the pressure because I don't think they really needed to press and they dropped by 10 yards. St Mirren dropping 10 yards allowed Motherwell to play some of the best football this season and we did nothing. Like, we did everything but score. Like, the amount of times we got the ball forward and we were basically camped in their half. We wouldn't be more camped if we had a tent. Honestly, it was so frustrating and we couldn't get anywhere with the ball. However, I cannot complain because I was a fan of Robinson doing this when he was at Motherwell because it got us results and it's doing the exact same for St Mirren. I've honestly never seen a team win so many set plays around the box yet be so ineffective with them. St Mirren committed 18 fouls and we also had uh, about 8 corners. We did have a few pop shots from far out but they were mostly straight down the throat of the keeper and they were ineffective. Overall, I didn't think we deserved to win the game like Kettlewell's been saying, he's been crowing about how good we have been. Yes, we've been alright, but if we actually had players that could score a goal that'd be nice you know it's it's great to have all these uh, fancy flicks and good looking football but if you can't finish your dinner then what's the point in even starting had St Martin not scored in the 55th minute I don't think we'd have had so much of the ball like, it would still be a very competitive game. It's just that some men shut up shop because that's what they needed to do. Because I don't think they were interested in scoring a second. Like, I thought they were happy on 1-0 and they were going to stay that way unless we conceded. Unless we scored, which we didn't. So, you know, that's just how it goes, unfortunately. Uh, another note, I thought Georgie Jen looked decent coming off the bench for his debut. But I must say... Both of our young wing-backs, so I'm not talking about Stephen O'Donnell, Brodie Spencer and Georgie Gent, both of them need a bit more confidence, I think, because I think they both have the the ability to get by their opponent and then put a ball in instead of just putting a cross in. He seemed a bit nervous about taking on a man, but he'll put a ball in, no problem. He's got the pace to get by someone. like. And Georgie Gent, he's got a really good delivery on him and he was unlucky to hit the bar. Had we scored, I think it had been a fair result at one each. But it wasn't to be and, you know, we're going to have three or four games like this, this this season. And there'll be three or four other games this season that go in the other direction. Like, for example, against Kamanak. I don't think we deserve to win the game, even though we were battering them uh, for the last 25 minutes that first half performance left a lot to be desired. And I think, you know, I'd, I'd rather win that Kilmarnock game and lose the St Mirren game instead of drawing both because we're a point up. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next vlog. See you soon. Take care. Hang on, before we end this video completely, uh, I want to end this on a really positive note. Um, on... Saturday at half time, uh, I was approached by a gentleman called 
Gordon, funnily enough, uh, and he migrated to Canada and he's a Motherwell fan and every time he's back over in Scotland, he always goes to Far Park. So I would just like to give him a wee shout out and I appreciate him coming up to me and saying hello and saying he watches the vlogs. It's just a hobby for me, but if I'm reaching people on all four corners of the globe, then that's fantastic. Uh, and it actually means a lot when someone actually comes up to me and says hello and they're from a different part of the world or they st they live in a different part of the world. Uh, and yeah, it's just a fantastic feeling for me. So thank you very much, Gordon. You made my day and uh, hopefully I made yours by giving you a wee mention here. But um, yeah, without further ado, I'll catch you guys later and yeah, have a good week.